Okay, I've been to a lot of amusement parks, but I think Marine Land in Niagara Falls, Canada is by far the strangest. The park only houses two roller coasters, they have a ladybug coaster, and most famously is Dragon Mountain. It's this massive aerodynamics looping coaster. It actually, I believe, holds the record for the largest steel roller coaster, and that is actually not by size, but rather acreage. It takes up this enormous plot of land, and actually the whole park takes up way too much land. These are a couple of the thoughts that ran through my head as I was visiting the park for the first time this past summer. The park has more land than they know what to do with. I felt that this park really had so much potential that really isn't being used. With the amount of land that they have, they could have so many more attractions than they have, but instead you have to walk a considerable distance to get from ride to ride. On top of that, when I was just walking around, it felt very empty. Maybe it was just because I was there on a not very crowded day, but my gosh, it was almost kind of creepy. I feel like Marine Land would be a perfect place to film a horror movie about an abandoned amusement park and people that get stuck there and stuff like that because it was kind of eerie just walking around and we were the only ones there, but the park was open. You could walk up to a ride and ride it if you wanted. But if you weren't riding anything and you walk past an attraction, it looks closed just because there were so few people there. Again, that may have just been the day that I was there, but I still think it kind of says something about this park. It almost makes me kind of worried. I'm wondering how much business they get and if they can afford to, you know, stay open for much longer. And actually, it kind of makes sense why they charge so much to get into the place. I believe admission was around like $50 a ticket, and I really don't think that that is worth it. I mean, for the coaster enthusiasts, they're going to be going for the two credits there, but my gosh, with so few attractions, I don't think that the $50 to get in is justified. Now, of course, with it being named Marine Land, you are going to get lots of animals. Some of the animals we saw were turkeys, which were not in a cage. That was actually, they were just walking around on the midway. They had lots of bears. We saw some beluga whales. Those were cool. They were my favorite animal that I got to see. They were so cute. They have this nice viewing area where you can go down below and see them through the water and then also see them as they're poking their heads in at the top. It was great seeing how they responded because they could see that we were there. And so they were almost like interacting with us. And that was really cool. But it was almost kind of sad because the animals were like all by themselves. In one area, I think we saw like some sea lions or seals, and they were in this aquarium tank, but there was like no one there. So they were just kind of swimming around all by themselves. So I think it really just goes back to that this park has so much potential that is not being used. A while back, we heard about possibilities that Six Flags could be buying up parks. I think this could be a park that would actually benefit from being owned by Six Flags, because if they would add in more attractions and actually give people legitimate reason to go here other than to ride Dragon Mountain, I think that'd be a big benefit to them. Now, talking about some rides specifically, their marquee attraction outside of Dragon Mountain is actually going to be Skyscreamer. This is this enormous SNS tower. It's a drop tower that sits at the top of the hill, so you have to walk up this steep hill, and at the very top, you go to ride this thing, and it is so big. Like, you, it takes you all the way up. I believe it's over 300 feet in height, and you can see Niagara Falls from the top. It's absolutely breathtaking. The view is beautiful. That's probably my favorite SNS drop tower that I've done. Now, people are probably wondering how Dragon Mountain is. I'm going to have a full review of that on my channel. So I'm not going to go too much in depth with that other than it is weird. But I think the big question that people are going to ask themselves is, is it worth it to visit Marine Land? If you're at Niagara Falls, should you stop by? You know, I think the answer to that is going to be mixed. For some people, it'll be yes, and for some people, it'll be no. For some people, they might think that $50 is just not justified enough to get two roller coasters and see some sad animals. So if that's the case, then I don't really think it'll be worth it. I mean, this isn't a park that you need to spend too much time at. So if you're looking for an all-day occasion, I mean, yeah, maybe lump it with Niagara Falls and some stuff like that, but you really don't need to spend much time here at all. If you're a coaster enthusiast, it's probably worth it to stop by once just so that you can see how the park is and just see how unique the place is. Because, like I said, it's probably the weirdest park I've ever been to. So in that regard, if you like that kind of thing, then yeah, stop by. But it's probably not a park that you're going to want to visit all the time. I'm glad that I got to visit. But if I'm back in the Niagara Falls area, I don't know if I would stop by again. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing on the park because I do think that there are some good things here. It actually had this cool level of charm as you're walking around on these massive midways. The pathways are very wide. You could drive like four different lanes of traffic through these things because they're so wide. 
and they have like a nice picnic area. It's pretty. They have lots of trees. It's very scenic. And they actually have some decent theming. Like some of these buildings looked very cool. So I think Marineland is doing some things right. But at the same time, I mean, when was the last time they added a new attraction? It's been a long time. They haven't done anything notable in years. I mean, and even one time they tried to add a topple tower, but then they just had problems with it. And so it never opened. That ride is still sitting there. So again, just kind of shows some of the problems that this park has. So I guess you can just take this for what it is. This is my review from Marineland in Niagara Falls, Canada. It's just a short drive away from the falls. So if you're on the Canada side and visiting, yeah, it might be worth it to stop by. I say just to get the experience, but I'm kind of worried for this park's future. I don't know if this is a place that can stand to be around much longer, if it's going to end up as one of those Giaga lakes where it just ends up closing down, or if someone buys it out and starts renovating it and adding more attractions, and then it starts growing. I don't know. But in the state that it is, Marineland, yeah, it's a pretty weird place. So let me know if you've been to Marineland, what you think of it. If you're wanting to visit, you can post all those thoughts in the comment section below. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews coming soon to Coaster Studios.